Hey Hodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hot Mess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're doing another Critical Sass and if you are new to my channel, Critical Sasses are when I talk about new makeup releases. We try to unpack the makeup marketing, get really into the nitty gritty and talk about whether or not these makeup releases are like actually good or not. Should they be worth our money or not? Like what is happening here? So that's what we're going to be doing today. I use a couple Instagram accounts as resources. I use Trend Moon One, I use Point and Click Vibes, and I use Makeup on My Radar. I'll have those linked down below in case you happen to not be following any of those accounts. That stuff's hard to do and it's kind of thankless and it seems like a lot of makeup companies really come for their necks sometimes. So please support the accounts that support this kind of content. I know that this kind of content is very popular on the internet, but I'm ready to jump into this. Let's get started. So the first thing I would like to talk about, this is an overarching theme. Oh, did you clock these? Did you clock the press-ons? Let me tell you something. Is everything taking a long time? Yes. Is it worth it? To me, sort of. Did it take me 10 minutes to put this earring in? Yes. What we're not going to do is make jokes about that because I'm capable and confident in my abilities. Do I like the press-ons? Yes. Did I potentially go a little bit longer than I should have with the press-ons? Yes. Now, I had acrylics like this once and it was not as impossible to me, but also maybe I got used to it, but I've already had the press. I've had them on for less than 24 hours. I've already lost two of them, had to glue them back on. You know, it's just like a lot for me. So I will be doing a tour to press on nails. I don't know if that's going to be video content. Do you want to know about press on nails? Let me know down below. I have no idea what I'm doing. Now it is June and it is Pride Month. Have you given me money yet? Have you, give, have you given me money yet? Speaking of money, I do have a Patreon. If you want to join it, go ahead. There's no pressure, but it'd be paying a queer person. And that's what Pride is about. <laughs> This year's a little bit different, right? So I talked about the Buy Pride Chrome Flakes from Danessa Myricks, and I said, is this the year that we want to celebrate bi people in our makeup items? And I said to the bisexuals out there, this isn't, a, I'm not gunning for you. I do think you deserve representation. You deserve that, you bisexual little cutie. You deserve to be seen by makeup brands. I do believe that. However, this year, it's not about the bisexuals. Now, I don't know when this chrome flake went into production. It seems like a product that's probably pretty easy to manufacture once you're like, I want blue and pink shifty goop. It doesn't seem hard to make that happen. Like, I don't know how to do that, but I feel like Danessa Myrick sort of knows how to do that. She did that. But trans people are under attack in a very like real and scary way in the United States right now. And I don't know that anyone could have foreseen that last year. I mean, people did and you were warned, but you know, here we are anyway. I've seen a couple things, definitely less people jumping on the pride bandwagon this year. And you know why they're not jumping on the bandwagon? It's not as popular because the queer people are falling out of favor with the general public, which isn't even true by the way, but these really loud minority people, this like loud minority of people who are like, trans people, they're the ones who are like winning and the brands are like catering to them because they like don't want to hear it. And listen, I relate. When I worked in Sephora during COVID, when people wouldn't just like wear their masks like we asked them to because it was like a store policy at the time they would yell at us and you just like didn't want to fight them anymore and it just was like annoying it's tough but uh, being an ally is not easy so these pussy ass brands are not doing pride or are not you know changing their logos which is a very easy thing to do uh, maybe if people in your company be like i'm not gonna support this woke company let me tell you something joe these companies haven't done much for me personally and they're still not doing much for people even when they participate in this pink washing situation i've heard it called pink washing i don't know that i agree with that because i thought pink washing was like when think like the pink tax i thought that was anyway they're calling it pink washing. I'm going to use it for shorthand. So this pink washing thing is happening. So these brands are saying that they're going to make a pride collection. Some brands donate money. That's an, a vague amount of money of proceeds, net gross. They say these words. Now, I know the difference between net profit and gross profit. Do you? And it's okay if you don't, and you shouldn't have to. I mean, when was the last time anyone actually looked at their paycheck. Most people don't even get physical paychecks. It just goes into your account. And I know a lot of people who have had long series of mess ups with their paychecks without even knowing because they haven't looked at them. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, here's my plea. 
check your paychecks every now and then. Make sure you're getting paid what you're supposed to. But beyond that, net gross, 5%, 5% of what? 5% of just this product, 5% of total sales across your company. What does that mean? Also, you know how whenever like a small creator says that they're going to donate money uh, from a live stream, it's like if you donate during this live stream, all of the stuff, all the money I make is going to get donated to a charity, X charity. And you know how if the small creator doesn't later post a receipt of a donation to the company, people lose their minds about it. I don't know that I've ever seen a brand tell me how much money they donated to whatever charities they said they were going to donate to during Pride Month. Has there ever been a follow up? What does that mean? Now, I had a fellow creator tell me how much Danessa Myricks was donating for. And I'm, I'm just using this as an example, by the way. It's like not a Danessa Myricks specific problem. The number needed to be further explained because people were getting mad. And the thing is, it, I think that they were actually donating more money than it perceived to be whenever someone hears the term 5%. Again, of what? How much money is that? Why are we only doing it this, this month of the year? I realize that it's Pride Month. However, we exist all of the time and so do black people and so do so many other people who are minority situations that are being attacked by society at large there's so many there's so many of us and so like be an ally all year round i don't need it just this month i need you to do it knowing that people are going to come for your neck because you're supporting a minority group that they want <coughs> off you have to make the commitment if you're gonna do this do it now let's talk about the actual products. It's always a rainbow, isn't it? I don't want to see another goddamn rainbow pride collection. I don't want to see a trans flag pride collection. I don't like rainbow makeup and I am queer. And if I am your target market for these products that you are releasing, I don't like them. Also, there are so many interesting things that you could do. Now, I jokingly said on my Instagram that you could do a bury your gaze trope palette. Now, if you don't know what the bury your gaze trope is, it's like whenever a piece of media, a book, a film, they say that like they have inclusivity, but then the person who is queer in that media is killed off in a dramatic fashion just to make you cry. But it was never about the representation of queer people. It was just like baiting queer people to read it and then having us go through the turmoil of the only queer character in the media dying. So I thought that'd be like a really funny palette. Now, is that dark? Is that like a, maybe a little too cynical? Should Danessa Myricks do a bury your gay palette? Should any brand? N no, they shouldn't. But I think it's funny. And if you want to collab with me and come up with that, I'm available. Any brand, any brand, we could donate all the money. doesn't matter to me. That sounds funny. But there are so many other ways to like represent queer people. You're just like choosing the flags as the only thing that we seem to want to wear. I know that there are so many people who love bright, colorful looks. Maybe bandana coated. I don't know. There's so many things that we use colors in so many ways. Did you know that on the rainbow flag that each one of the colors of the rainbow is a specific thing? So you could do a green collection and it could be just about the color green. And you could talk about all the things, which I think is nature, the, the color green in the rainbow flag, the pride flag. There you go. Then it's not a rainbow. Also, collaborate with queer people. During, like, if you're gonna go this route and only sell to queer people during the month, you could collaborate with Kim Petras. And I'm not saying that's like the best idea, because I think collaborating with celebrities is like almost never the way to go. But there are a lot, a lot of queer content creators, large and small, that you could work with anytime, but you could definitely do it during June. You could work with them and have whatever you release with them during June. And then that way, I know if I'm buying that collab, that that queer person is getting some money and hopefully a fair amount of money, because I hope you're doing this in a fair way, which I'm sure that it's not, because we all remember what happened to Nikki Tutorials. <sighs> also, don't buy from ColourPop, because they really don't care about queer people, and they showed their whole ass last year. They keep putting on the facade as if they do, but they don't. So don't buy it from ColourPop. I think the people that have handled the best was Ritual Defee. They donated money. I don't know if they showed us a receipt about how much money they donated, but they're a queer women-owned brand. And they were like, we don't want to do that. So 
for the next two days, we'll donate 100% of our net profits. 100% of net profits sounds a lot better than 5% of a big amount of profits. I don't know. I understand that a little bit better. Fuck everyone, this pride. Okay, Isamea, our friend and yours and mine is releasing the Industrial 2.0 collection. <laughs> What? You had two ideas? You've run out of ideas? We're already going back to the first idea? What are you doing? What is your brand? You don't even know. I'm guessing that the industrial collection sold better than the Wild West collection. They're like, well, let's just go back to what we already know works. Pathetic. Cowardly. I don't even care what's in this collection. I'm sure there will be stuff that aesthetically I'm into into this collection because I liked the industrial collection the first time it came around. But what is your brand? You talked all this talk about it being this brand that like every every season was going to be a new release and it was going to be like hyper individualistic and very different from the last release. We made it through two of those before you had to go back to the first one. Now, I think the idea of revisiting a collection that was successful is a good idea. Let's do that in five years. But you haven't even gotten that far from this. If your original intention was that these things aren't going to be available forever and you can still buy the original industrial palette, what is your brand? What are you doing? You do not know, and I do not care. I don't even care what this is going to look like. This is just, I don't care. I don't care. Try harder, because you're not. Glamlight is collaborating with Rick and Morty. Listen, listen, listen to me. Are you listening? I don't give a fart about Rick and Morty. I don't care what this show is about. I know that the fans of the show have shown some piss poor behavior to some poor McDonald's workers over a little bit of saw that they bullied into them bringing back in the first place. Now, some of you might be Rick and Morty fans, and I understand that there's some intelligent humor like hidden in this show, right? And I'm not coming for, but like Glamlight, can you just release like, I don't know, a palette based on not an IP? What are you doing? Like, why is this what we're doing? Sco you released two Scooby-Doo collections and now this and is that all? Is this it? Is this what you do? Is, are you proud of yourself? You shouldn't be. Pathetic. I guess Sofia Vergara is releasing a makeup collection. There is an SPF for 42 doll hairs, a CC Creamy Compact for $54. The first thing I said, it's a CC cream SPS. Sun damage is really what I want to do with the line. The line is supposed to protect and also restore. I don't know Sofia Vergara to be a huge fan of makeup. I don't think Sofia Vergara, and I think makeup. Also, I don't think Sofia Vergara, sun damage reversing diva, what is this? Trash. I like truly don't understand. There are some celebrities whenever they come out with a makeup brand, it's fully realized. We saw Rihanna. We saw Selena Gomez do it. We've also seen small creators or like creators make their own makeup line and it's like this fully realized thing. Is this? Don't buy this. Please don't buy this. Don't buy this. There's quality SPFs at all price points. Why would we buy them? What is makeup going to do to restore sun damage? So if there are actives in this makeup that are supposed to, I don't know, a lot of the times with sun damage, like if you have sunspots, it's like cell turnover is what you're doing, which is like active, like retinol, all of those things that produce like increase cell turnover. That's what you're doing with those. You need to be especially careful in the sun. I don't trust any of my makeup, no matter how much SPF in it as enough SPF. What it comes to like protecting my skin from the sun, I'm not turning to so Sofia Vergara. And I don't think you should either. I think you should go to a dermatologist and have them recommend some products to you. Go to an esthetician, have them recommend some products to you. Now, if you go to an esthetician that carries a specific line, they're going to recommend products within that line. So you have to know that going in and be willing to pay the amount of money that those products may cost. Or, you know, you could do a little bit of research. There are a lot of really great skincare content creators that probably have really valuable information about how to reduce the appearance of sun damage and what you could do to t better take care of your skin in the sun moving forward. I would trust all of those people before I would trust Sofia Vergara with my skin. This is so stupid. Wes Metelier is releasing the Beauty Butter Matte Powder Bronzer. Oh, there's a new shade of the bronzer. It's a deeper shade of brown. Cool. We love a shade range extension to be more inclusive. I mean, it doesn't look super deep, but it's something and I'm not telling anyone who is of a deeper complexion to just accept what you get. I mean, I always love to see shade range extensions, especially with like luxury brands, but they're not good at it. Like I'm not going to try to out here and be like, West Matilda is so brave and so 
bold for making like a new shade of bronzer. They could have added three more deeper than that if they wanted to, but they didn't. So then they also released the liquid version of their super loaded highlighter. It comes in, I think, the same shades that all of the regular ones come in. I've never tried the regular ones. I have tried a handful of Westman Atelier products and I have enjoyed them. I don't know that we always need to like make a new formula variation on the thing that we already have. You could have made this anything and named it anything, but then you're like trying to relate it back to this thing. It's what Urban Decay does with the Naked palettes. It's what Charlotte Tilbury does with... Oh my god, I can't even think of the name of it. My brain is broken. <laughs> I've been broken. <laughs> I am I cease to exist. This is her pillow talk. And everything has to be part of this. I don't need that. I don't need that. So you could just mean like liquid highlighter and we all have been like, cool. That sounds like something Westman Atelier would make. If you're into this kind of product and you don't already have this kind of product, maybe. But what I would recommend to you, and I guess we could talk about this now, is trying my favorite liquid highlighter because it, now it comes in a mini. So you don't have to commit to the full thing. Now, is it still expensive? Yeah, $25 for a mini a little expensive. I don't know how many ounces are in it off the top of my brain. I'm going by the fact that I saw this rather than seeing it in my Instagram feed, which is now just gonna confuse me, but the Auric Glow Less now comes in minis. And I would suggest that before trying the Westman Atelier ones. Not that I don't think the Westman Atelier ones might be good. I, I, mean, I don't know, I have never tried them. I don't know them, I don't have them. But what I'm saying is just like, you either already have this kind of product, and I also don't think that everyone likes this kind of product. And I think if you're gonna try something like this, try it in a mini first. It doesn't have to be the Auric Glow Less, but like try it in a mini first. The Westman Atelier, the, the highlighter sticks come in a mini. You can do the same thing with that, that you can do with these liquid highlighters. You can put it underneath your foundation. I've done it. It makes your skin look really glossy and classy. And if that's what you're into, you're into. Don't buy the West Metelier ones. Buy anything else. Try the Auric ones. The Auric ones are... I love that they made a mini of that because it just it's going to be easier for people to try, especially people who might have sensitivities because Auric's not sold in stores. Can't get samples of it. This is like... I think that's good. I think Auric made a really good call there. Congratulations to Samantha Ravendahl for having a brain. What? We're two days into summer. We're already talking about fall collections from Dior. Pleh, pleh, pleh. Ew, gross, yucky, gross. Don't buy Dior eyeshadows. They're not very good. I don't like Dior eyeshadows. I don't recommend them. Other people like them. I would try their blushes. That blush looks pretty. That blush looks nice. That blush, what is that blush called? There's the Rouge blush in 537. I guess it, it doesn't have a name. I like the look of that. That's pretty. That's cute. I'd try it. Those palettes I would not try. <laughs> Having tried my other palettes once before, I was burned. I'll never forget it. And I will never forgive Amanda Z for making it look so beautiful. Now, I believe that Amanda Z likes it and can use it and makes it, I mean, obviously she made, she sold me on it. I don't think she was trying to do me, but like, I don't recommend Dior eyeshadows. I think they're crap. Lunar Beauty collaborated with Laura Lee Los Angeles. So Manny and Laura Lee did a collab with their brands, which I think is smart. It's smart. It's not directly like tied to them i guess per se that's a really pretty neutrals palette should i have ever been afforded the opportunity to try it i'm sure i would like it that's really pretty that's very my speed right now in fact kind of looks like what's going on in that palette looks like what i did on my eyes today clearly into the color story i love a neutral and it comes with the new lipsticks which i've heard are very good you've i've heard reports back that the lipsticks from lunar beauty are very good and the packaging is really luxe and super great and it looks like there's a blush and highlight palette now you lost me there what's cool is it looks like there's a really deep blush in there there's two deep blushes that i think would look really beautiful on skin tone but those people who would benefit from those blushes probably wouldn't benefit from the two blushes next to them. you could have done two trios for different skin tones i think that would make more sense than doing a six pan i know that lunar beauty does the six pan situation in their blush palettes but and i understand it's probably for the sake of a collaboration makes more sense for a small business to do it in such a way like it's probably cheaper for them and ultimately cheaper for us to buy it this way it doesn't work because if i bought that palette looking at the, the highlighters in that palette i don't think either one of those would work on my skin my skin is too fair if it, i'd be really surprised if either one of those worked there's that baby pink blush that baby pink blush has been on trend for a while now and a lot of brands have them there's the dior there's persona there's so many brands like uh the house labs one like there's so many there's so many brands that have this color that if you wanted it you probably already have it at this point but also the lipsticks are lanny and mara Stop it. Stop the f tree. Stop embarrassing me. Refi is releasing the lip blur, a lightweight blurring formula that adds a subtle blush of color to enhance your natural lip, helps 
Keep Lips Feeling Nourished and Moisturized. Contains blurring technology to smooth the lips and reduce fine lines, giving a subtle yet natural finish. The lip component is fully recyclable, vegan, cruelty-free, cruelty, <laughs> cruelty free in six shades. I don't know what formulation of the Generation G lipstick I tried. Back in the OG days of my channel, I did a Glossier brand review over the course of a couple videos. That thing dried out my lips and I had trauma from it. So something like this comes out and I was like, oh, blur my lips. Don't mind if I do. And then I think of that Glossier product and I think of how uncomfortable it was and how there was no pigment to it. Now I'm more accustomed to less pigment these days. I tried Glossier at a time where I was like full coverage, high impact, high highlight, intense eyeshadow. I've moved away from that, but still I don't think I would like this kind of lip product. So this isn't for me. Also, what is Refi about? Like, what what are they about? <laughs> I feel like I have no, I have no understanding. I know they just kind of like Surratt. They just like seem to be doing packaging things for the sake of packaging. Like the lip liner that has like two parts to it. I I didn't need an extra step for my lip line. I think tr I tr if there was something I don't need, it's like an extra step <laughs> for a lip liner. What does Refi do? Someone can in, re hi. Refi, if you're there, tell me, what are you about? What are you trying to do? What's going on? Hello? You didn't do that intro. What's going on? Okay, so here's the deal. I was trying something new. I'm trying something. Listen, I heard that intros were over and I, my intros were kind of long and I thought perhaps that maybe I should shouldn't do the whole like like comment subscribe thing at the beginning of my videos I, don't even got them excuses. I understand that most people don't get this far into a video but maybe if they did they would okay i'll tell them i'll tell them hi it's amidst my video and you know what i need you to, to do to help to help me if you could like this video and engage with it in as many ways as you'd like to help me, that would help me. Sub subscribe. H hit the bell. I don't... Ring my bell. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Please do it. Please. So the gods forgive me. Gross. Yuck. Ew. Ew. I, ew. 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 Yuck. Gross. How's <laughs> life? <laughs> House Labs released a new shade. Hold on, let me tell you what the shade is. House Labs released a new shade in their blushes. It is called Lavender Blonde and it is a light pink purple. It's berry. It's a... Uh, yuck. I... Okay. So, <laughs> fun fact about me. I saw this for the first time and I had that response you just saw. This isn't my first time seeing it. But then I had the realization, I hate berry colors more than I hate pink. Ew, berries. Ew, berry tones. Ew. 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 And while I have tried the House House blushes, and I do think that they are good, I swatched that, and I swatched it, and I also went, ew. Ew. I swatched it yesterday. I was like, ew. I know we're heading into, we're heading into fall. I just said that we are two days into summer, and I'm like, we're heading into, as we're heading into fall, I guess it makes sense for, no, it doesn't. It's, no. No. <laughs> No berry toads. I won't accept it. No. Danessa Myricks is releasing the Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. I think it's cool to see a skin tint come in this many shades because I feel like a lot of skin tints don't. I mean, I know that Fenty did, but talk about products that are gross. I did not like the Fenty skin. It, it, it didn't work for me. Not for me. I haven't tried much from Danessa Myricks. I, I'm go. Oh, that's what I meant to look at. I was at Sephora and I meant to look at the Danessa Myricks stuff and I did it. Although none of the Sephora's in Pittsburgh have a lot of Janessa Myricks. I thought they might have one of the contours, but I, I didn't. So I might have to I might have to buy that online. Anyway, if you don't know, I'm working on a contour video because I'm about to finish my cream contour from Fenty that I've been using. And I was like, I'm so excited to be done with this. And so I figured since I'm on a journey of contour, we can go on it together, buy all the contour products that we all seem to be interested in and see which one is the one for me. Now, that's not going to mean the one for you, but you know, we'll get to see them all perform and have opinions on them. I bet I would like this, but it's not something that I feel like I'm running out to buy from Tanessa Myricks, like skin tint. Although I'm very close to being done with my Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick. 
But I might just buy it again because I like it. But I might buy the Glossier skin tint because I haven't had it in a while. And I like that too. So I talked about this on my Instagram story. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'm at Hope Mess Tom there. Feel free to, to, to follow me there. I know that a bunch of accounts are like now really subtly getting like shadow banned. I might be. But like also, if I don't have to use Instagram anymore, I've won. I could delete my Instagram and feel good about it, you know? Like, I understand that it's a tool for me as a creator, but I already don't have Twitter. And I already don't. Well, I have like a Facebook page for this. I couldn't tell you the last time I logged on to check out what was happening. There could be so many hateful comments. <laughs> so many hateful comments. I know a lot of people make good money on YouTube as content creators. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have the spirit for it. So anyway, keep subscribed. Hit the bell icon <laughs> on this video because I don't want to have to put stuff on Instagram. Don't make me do that. Meta, cancel my cancel my account, Meta. I don't want to be on Instagram anymore. I don't care if you shadow ban me. But that's really sucking for the people who it has happened to. Again, I don't know if it's happened to me, but I also almost never make grid posts. But I seem to be able to post in my stories just fine. So if I can keep shit posting there, so be it. Anyway, I talked about this on my Instagram stories and I said, I'm not, not interested. So Elf. <laughs> yes, I said Elf. Me. Hope as Tom. Luxury aficionado. Home as Tom, who stands before you in an overall mini skirt with just a bra on underneath it. Queen of luxury <laughs> said, Elf, for me. They're releasing the Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. Now, I, will I be trying one of the putty primer products for the contour video? Yes, I will, because it was requested of me. And I said, if I can spend $68 on a contour, I surely could spend $7. On a contour product, I'll, I was requested to buy both of the El, uh, the Elf Putty Primer bronzer in the lightest shade, which seems to only be available on their website, and the new contour Charlotte Tilbury dupe thing. I have tried not not the Elf version, but I have tried the Tatcha Primer Tub thing that like you know four years ago on YouTube was like it's the thing everyone loves the thing you know I tried it didn't like it <laughs> I have never tried the liquid version I bet I would like this and I, I think there's something to it that I would like and I think like it's like it's not out of the realm of possibility that I would enjoy this do I need this will I be buying the putty primer no I just bought the Victoria Beckham primer and golden and that it's very expensive and I already know that I like it and I want to use that. I have the regular version of the Victoria Beckham primer. I have the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base and I also have the Makeup Forever primer and I have the Ritual Defeat primer. I have so many primers. I don't need this one. A lot of my Instagram peers, Instagram content creators, they're all very big fans of Blend Bunny and I'm sure that their formula is really great. It's not like a brand that intrigues me. I'm not like, you know, into color as much as this brand brand seems to put out but they released the or about to release the sugar and grunge palette all of their palettes look the same to me and I understand that this is like certainly different than the last five palettes I've seen but whenever it whatever my the rods and cones in my eyes reflect this into my brain and make it an image that I can see I see the same thing like cognitively I know that they're not exactly the same thing but it's just like something that I like to do on this channel as you know is like try not to like overlap too much right and th the thing is is like we always we always have something to do not always some people have no makeup and no eyeshadow right and if they're starting from the ground up this might be a great way for them to explore color I'm not saying that it's not you know I kind of operate under the people who are watching my channel and this specifically this kind of content are the kind of people who have some makeup under their belts maybe it's not the same makeup that I own or the same you know you know maybe they more are more into drugstore and indie makeup than I am but they you know they have a lot of that and I have a lot of what I have. There's nothing coming out in the makeup world that is like reinventing makeup in such a fashion that we need to go do it. So I see this and I think if I bought this, there are probably some colors that I would favor, which makes sense. We always, you know, we all, like I like I like grungy greens. So I probably would stick to like the greens in this palette and maybe like some of the browns. I don't need this whole thing. So I'm just going to favor the thing. So if like I'm duping the vibes out. Like if you think of the way Hannah Louise posts and dupes out the vibes of a palette, she picks like the four shades that she would use over and over again. And she's like, guess what? I already have this in my collection. Guess what? If any look that I would make with this, if I had it in my hands, is something that I probably already have the capacity to make with my makeup. But like plenty. I, I like the I, it's the their format is always the same it's the square pans it's the same size and for some reason the way that they they do that doesn't 
spark joy in my brain. I know that it really helps some people to have like the depths all go down the line and the shimmers all be in one row. Like I understand that it's like very pleasing for some people. I don't thrive under that because I feel like it's telling me what to do. So I like a little more sporadic of like a, a moment when it comes to the layout of my palettes. I don't like shimmer and matte unless I'm using an all matte palette, but there's it's not. There's shimmers there, right? We can see those. I don't know what it is about this brand, but every time they release something, I think I should like that, but I don't. That looks like the same thing that they've already released. And again, cognitively, no, that it isn't. But again, you can blame the cones and rods in my eyes. I don't see anything different. <laughs> it looks the same. But also in this post that I saved is some stuff from Lethal. Lethal Cosmetics is launching new multi-chromes. Cool, whatever. There's a holographic silver, and then there's pure metals collection. Those look like, now I've not tried these, so I'm speaking from just imagery. The Davina, I don't know what they're called, but I've had my eye on them for a long time. I haven't pulled the trigger on them. And then every time I mention them, someone in my comment section is like, you probably really like them. So I've also been told that they kind of read similarly on the eye. Wonder if these will do the same. Those are cool. I mean, like, I'm over, multi, I'm over multi-chromes. I'm over it. I'm over it. I feel like, I feel like brands are still like, this is new and exciting to you. Have a multi-chrome. And, no, I don't need another multi -room. I don't, I don't need another multi -room. I'm sure they're going to, you know, I, I'm, I'm much like me and my love of complexion versus my audience's disdain for complexion products. I'm also floating on my island. I feel as like, I don't care about multi -chromes anymore. Like I still love them and I will still use them. But like, you're not going to get me makeup brand releasing multi -chromes because I don't want it. I'm good. But that's not to say that someone can't make eyeshadows that I'm excited about again. Because I, I, I'm like the unofficial spokesperson for the Earthborn collection from, from Riley. And I, let me just tell you that Riley isn't paying me and neither is Shine by SD. Those eyeshadows, I use them all of the time for like a finishing touch on almost every look I do. And I'm not wearing them today. I'm trying something new. You can check out in the description box down below what's on my eyes if you're very curious about it, but I'm not going to talk about it here the information is down there you can still get me with eyeshadow you just have to be like really deliberate and good about it and i think that's what riley did and that's why i'm you know a stan okay i'm a, I'm a riley stan. i'm a seeking shift stan sue me anyway girl let's collab also emily venmoed me money emma uh, what am i we're at the end of the video but i just want to say emily you did not have to venmo me <laughs> That was very funny. I should have responded in the app. I love a commitment to the bit and you did it. And I'm just here to shout you out. You Venmoed me pride money. You too can be like Emily and support a small creator by Venmoing me. <laughs> Happy pride to all the homosexuals who watch my channel, all the gay people that watch my channel, all the bisexual and trans people who watch my channel, all the pansexuals, asexuals. Happy pride. I love you. You're the best. Pay queer people. Pay black trans people. Final thought on the pride stuff, because I meant to say this earlier. What you do when you buy from a brand who says that the portion of their proceeds or their proceeds from that weekend, that collection, are going to a charity, that company gets to write off that donation and it is a tax break for them you can donate your money directly to a charity i'm not even talking about lgbt i would prefer an lgbtqi charity or like uh charities that help black or indigenous people supporting charities like that i would prefer you support that but any charity and then you donate to them and you get a receipt and then you can write it off on your taxes and do you need another rainbow palette no if you had 50 dollars for the item you also have $50 to donate. If you had $10 for the item, you also have $10 to donate. Also, if you're a queer person, you can just keep your money and support yourself. Anyway, that's my time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the vibe here. As the god said earlier, yes, god, mom, and the house on boots go I hope you enjoyed this pre-recorded Critical Sass Wednesday. Now, if you made it this far, Wednesday, we are, I'm doing a live. It's a Let's Play With Makeup. People on my Instagram voted for what they wanted to see me use. 
we will use it on the live. So join me Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tiffany will be with me there. Tiffany will also will probably participate in Critical Sasses in the future. But I did this one for the real ones. But Tiffany will be with me on the live on Wednesday. So they're still going to be around. They love you. You love them. It's a great big happy family. It's just like Barney. And there's a kid that lives in this house now. So we love Barney. Actually, we never watch Barney. We just watch Miss Rachel. Open, shut. Remember to follow your host. And you will find me. I will see you in a video very shortly. In a live. Very shortly. Also, if you miss the live, I'm going to edit it and post it just like I would with a critical task. Bye-bye. Right.